Wouldn't it be nice if we could control our timeline and edit video faster by keeping the tools that we use the most literally on our thumb? This way we aren't wasting time going up to menu bars or hitting multiple awkward keyboard shortcut commands we have to memorize with our fingers. Kind of like that game we used to play Twister, remember that one? Anyways, today I want to show you my favorite mouse that I use for video editing in DaVinci Resolve, the Logitech G600. We're going to go over the Logitech G Hub driver software that the G600 uses and how to program macros. Don't worry, it's simple. Heck, I don't even know how to program code. And most importantly, why I map the buttons the way that I do and why even use an MMO gaming mouse to edit video in the first place. My quick disclaimer here is that this is not an ad. I wasn't paid or offered the product for this video. I just love it and thought maybe it might help you out too. Um, I love the G600 so much. I've actually bought a couple over the years. And so that way I have one in both of my cutting rooms. Um, but it's not even a new mouse. It's just super great. Now, what is it? It's a wired MMO gaming mouse. Although I only use it to trigger hotkeys for video editing and DaVinci Resolve, uh, not video games. But you could also use it in Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, Avid Media Composer any software application really. The build is really nice. Uh, it's made out of nice plastics and whatnot. Um, and it's never needs, it never needs a charge because it has a wired connection. So it's not like the Apple mouse where you have to like flip it over and it dies at the worst time throughout the day. Um, you're always wired, so it's always working, which is great. Um, the thumb buttons on the side, they are customizable RGB lighting, uh, which is cool if you're into that sort of thing. There's 20 buttons total. That includes the all important middle click uh, for copying color grades on the color page. And there's also a G shift button is what they call it to get a whole nother layer of customizability. It's like holding a modifier key R on the keyboard, but on the mouse. The side buttons are angled and they're grouped into two sections at the top and bottom. That way you can sort of feel around without having to look at what you're doing to find the button that you need to use. Why use it? Well, I first heard about using an MMO gaming mouse from a presentation by Eddie Hamilton at NAB. He's a feature film editor and he's cut movies like Mission Impossible and he's working on the new Top Gun that I can't wait to see. And I'm thankful for him sharing this tip several years ago because it saved me so many hours of extra mousing around. I linked his presentation from nearly a decade ago in the description if you're interested. Um, but I actually, I also use a Wacom tablet over here as well and the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. Um, this is just one of my favorite tools and it's by far the cheapest, so there's a lot of bang for the buck for sure. So here's how I have my G600 set up in the Logitech G Hub software. I've got uh, this GA button is set to zoom in to the timeline. We've got zoom out right underneath it. And then left and right on the scroll wheel is toggle source record and swap timeline and source. So uh, there's a great video I've got that I'll probably link in the description. If you don't know about editing from timeline to timeline, this is a great one to, to know about. This is how you do it really quickly with the mouse. Uh, if we go over here to the side, this is probably what you're curious about. All these buttons here on the side, there's 12 of them. Um, the way I have them set up right now is select all clips backwards. And then on the opposite side of that, I have all selecting all the clips forward. Um, we've got split clip, which is one of the destructive things I have on here, which it will actually cut the clip. Now I only have three destructive commands on the mouse on purpose. There's split, trim start, and trim end. And I minimize this in case there's another person that comes to sit down at my desk when the timeline's open, they move stuff around and whoops, all of a sudden large chunks of my timeline are gone. It's kind of a fail safe against that. And then obviously underneath we've got double click, we've got um, add marker, and this will add marker with pulling the th comment thing up so I can fill it out to let me know what the clip is about. We've got play in to out. We've got trim start and trim end, which are our top tails. I've got those right next to each other. So that's a quick way to cut things down. Next to that, we've got match frame. Match frame is super, super powerful command that lets you call up a clip into your source so you can find other sections of what someone was talking about from based off of what was on your timeline. Um, we've got swap timeline and source again, because I use that so often. We've got quick export. Let's see, export the timeline super, super fast with one button press and zoom fit to timeline. And then this side button that's on the mouse, um, this one right here, um, this is the G shift button. So to see the G shift commands, it's like a whole nother layer. If I click this right here, we can see where I've got it set at. I'm still sort of playing with it. The top three right now I have sort of as go to different pages in DaVinci Resolve. So we've got go to media page, go to cut page, go to edit page, which I use all of those all the time. And then I've also got a uh, mark clip, 
uh, the in and outs based off of the beginning of the clip, end of the clip, that's X on the keyboard, and clear in and out. And then we'll probably also program a new macro here. I'll show you how to do that. Maybe we'll make one that is a go to color page. But right now, that's sort of how I have them all set up here in the Logitech G Hub. Now, before we jump into how to program the buttons on the Logitech G Hub software, I want to welcome you if this is your first time here to create a video tips. My name is Chadwick. And this channel is all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. So if you're new to that, please subscribe right down below right now. It's totally free. That way you don't miss out on the new great tip next week. Also, I want to point out if you're using an old mouse right now and you don't have a giant mouse pad, you know, something like this, uh, you should get one. You should totally get one. Um, I've had them for several years. They're awesome. They make a great giant placemat for like coffee, water, snacks and they actually function as a mouse pad too. <laughs> How to program macros. So you can see the mouse actually has three different profiles that are internal to it that you could store this if you took it to another computer and you didn't have the G Hub software on it and you would do that by clicking on right here. I don't do this because it only lets you assign one keyboard uh, like button press to each button on there, which isn't super helpful. So I'm gonna just let it enable the using the driver software to do this and I'll make sure that I have my I'm logged in and using this Logitech G Hub software each time I use it. So to program it and set it up, go back over here, make sure you have the, your profile that you you're wanting to set up on. Um, and you do this by at this main page right back up here. You can just say uh, add game or application and you can choose any application that you want to be setting custom commands to. So I've already set mine to DaVinci Resolve. You just choose the app, then you can go over here into the mouse and then choose DaVinci Resolve. You can see I also had one there for Final Cut Pro. It gives you options for DPI sensitivity. Um, mine is set so I can toggle between these different sensitivities, which is how fast the cursor is moving across the screen. I like it at 1600 for doing screen captures like this. The next one underneath is our assignments. This is where we program all our buttons. And we're going to be creating a new macro. And I'll show you how you assign it to these buttons that are on the mouse. It's real easy. It's a drag and drop type thing. And the way we create the macro is we'll say create macro. Just click on there and we'll call this one color page. Because I want to create one that actually I just push a button and it takes me to the color page in DaVinci Resolve directly without having to do anything else. Here's all the options we can do, all these holds, toggle sequences, which are more advanced than I probably ever need. And, and you might find a good use for it, so you'll have to let me know what you use it for. But I'm going to choose no repeat. And then to create it, you hit the little plus guy to start recording. And I'm going to record keystrokes. You can see there's a lot of other options there. You could have all kinds of text strings. But I'm going to do Shift-6. Shift-6 is what takes us to the color page. A little confusing here because it shows plus button instead of the shift button, but it recorded me hitting shift six on the keyboard. I'll hit stop recording. I'll hit save. And now we have a macro down here called color page. We just need to assign it to a key on the mouse. And the one I want to assign it to is on the side buttons for my thumb. And I want it to be a G shift button. So that means I'm holding down the G shift button, which is, if we see over here, it's this right one, kind of like the ring finger button. And so what that means is when I'm holding that down, it's like I'm holding down two things at once. Uh, and we're gonna do it to, let's do it right across from mark in, mark out. So it'll be on this button right here, what's currently control six. You just take this, you click and you drag this over here. It's this simple. And now that is assigned to, with the G shift button down, we should be able to quickly jump to the color page. And let's test that out by going over to resolve and see. So right now we're in the edit page. If I hold G shift down and then hit that button, yep, just like that, it took us directly to the color page. And like I, you saw those early ones, I've got go to the media page, go to the cut page, go to the edit page, now go to the color page. I can quickly jump between those two. The other thing that's really cool that I wanna point out that's in here is right underneath here, there is explore the most popular gaming profiles. If you click in here, this is where you're gonna be able to find creative video tips, anything that I've sort of uploaded. So if you just search in this bar, you know, yep, there you go. There's, there's one of them. You should be able to find any sort of uh, key maps that I upload to here. And then you can quickly download those to your own mouse or your own keyboard. So it's a pretty cool way to share key maps with other people right there within the software. Oh, and the other thing I wanna make sure I point out is this software automatically uh, detects 
which app is open. So if, as long as you add it as a new game or application, when you are active in that application, uh, it's gonna make sure it uses those buttons only in that application and not in others. If you're interested in picking up one of these G600 mice or anything from Amazon really, you can support the channel by using an affiliate link that's down there in the description. It won't cost you anything extra. And it's a pretty inexpensive mouse that pairs really nicely with the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. Speaking of which, if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve or the Speed Editor, um, I've got some great playlists popping up right over here somewhere. And since there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video.